I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. May God bless those who read and hear his word. I think that's the NIV that I got that from. And I don't often give testimony because it's not in my nature to spend a whole lot of time talking about myself. But I know that a part of walking with God is being a living testimony. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I may not talk a whole lot, but I'm here to tell you that God has been good to me. Amen. A little over a week ago, I was walking from my car to Target. And I saw a woman putting her food in the trunk of her car. And I crossed the street away from the woman because I didn't want to scare her. <laughs> and 10 to 15 feet ahead of me was a white park SUV. And another SUV was 30 or 45 feet ahead of me, waiting for that parking space. And an unexpected thought came to my mind, almost like an inner voice that said, while you are trying to avoid scaring this woman, this SUV to hit you. Now, as far as I could tell, there was no chance that the driver or the passenger couldn't see me. It was broad daylight. I'm easy to see. Uh, I, I hadn't even got to the point of danger because I was 15 feet away. And I was at a good angle. But I didn't ignore that voice because I knew that God speaks to us in many ways. Can I get it you? So I hesitated. I slowed my speed, but I kept walking because the danger wasn't obvious. Well, right before I stepped behind the vehicle, the vehicle right here, and I'm about to take that step right behind that vehicle, the driver whipped out of that parking space so fast through a white blur in front of me. I stood still at the back end, the side, and the front bumper whizzed past me in that order. The passenger, a little girl, no older than my daughter, she gasped when she saw me, because she was horrified. At this point, I was basically in front of that SUV. So the driver had to stop, because if he had went out and came forward, he would hit me. So I walked around and kept going. When I made it past the vehicle, I heard, sir, sir. I turned around to face the man. And he said, I'm so sorry. There was no excuse for that. I told him not to worry about it. He continued to apologize. I wasn't mad at him or the situation. How could I be mad in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Because I know that it was God that saved me. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I want to talk to you today about the blessing in loving, honoring, and obeying God. Amen. If you look at that entire scripture, Psalms 91, you see all the way that God is willing to protect his children. He said you don't have to worry about anything harming you at night or any day. He said you don't have to worry about being sick. He said that people all around you might pass away but you will still be standing. All right, all right. In the scripture, God doubled down and said, if you can step on a snake mm -hmm. or a lion, and they will be in more danger than you. Mm -hmm. Now that is some protection. A house can protect you the way God does. Right. Money can't protect you the way God does. Right. A weapon can't protect you the way God does. Can I get a witness? Right. Now don't misunderstand. This isn't anti-protection. <laughs> this is not anti-mask or anti-vaccination. God will use all those things to protect you. Amen. Don't ever use the Bible as an excuse to ignore wisdom. Right. Remember, the Bible tells us that it rains on the good and the bad. Amen. So if you don't protect yourself, you basically tell me that you don't believe water is wet. That was a storm that came through York recently and a tornado was headed our way. 
I didn't sit in the living room where it was unsafe. I took my family, I woke up first lady, I got my daughter, I took them all in the hallway, and we said a prayer. Because part of being a good Christian is making wise decisions. Can I get with this? But he says that he's going to protect us. Our protection really comes from God. And he tells you why. He said, because you love me, I will protect you. And I'm living with it that loving God is a blessing. The only question is, do we love God the way we're supposed to? Or how do we actually love God the way we should? Now, love is supposed to be natural. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We were made for love because of love by love. Mm -hmm. Love should be as easy as breathing for us. But all of mankind, not just any of us, but all of mankind is so far from where we are supposed to be that we can't be who God has called us to be. Can I get a witness? Yeah. So a lot of us are going to get love wrong. Mm -hmm. But the closest thing we have to an example of how to love God is the love between a parent and a child. Mm -hmm. And we are the children in this situation. Mm -hmm. And God is the parent. Mm -hmm. and, and what do we do? Think about it. What do we do to show our love for our parents? Mm -hmm. We obey them and we honor them. Yeah. Both of them are actions. Both of them are actions because if your feelings are real, your actions are going to show it. Can I hear with me? I'm not going to talk too much about the obedience part. I mean, we, we know that. Don't be that Walmart child. You know, the one that went until they get to the store to act up. Okay. It's as if they know that there's only so much you can do to them in front of that camera. Amen. But we know that God is a loving God. Amen. But we also know that there are consequences for disobeying Him. Yeah. So just like there are consequences for disobeying your parents, there are consequences for disobeying God. So be obedient. It's Amen. simple as that. But I do believe that we aren't always sure how to honor God. And you have to find the right balance. Honoring God involves giving Him the glory. It means honoring Him with our thoughts, words, and action. And, and this can be confusing because there's a time and place for everything. But honoring God isn't just a moment, it's a movement. Mm -hmm. Honoring God isn't just a diet, it's a lifestyle. Can I give a witness? Yeah. Honoring God is like giving a gift. It's giving a gift to God. But it blesses us too. Mm -hmm. Just like loving Him comes with benefits, so does honoring Him, so does obeying Him. It's recognizing that whatever we do, when we, when we eat healthy, when we exercise to take our bodies, when we are a good father or a good mother, a good son or a good daughter, we, we are not just doing it for ourselves or other people. We are doing it for God. Amen. When we work hard, we are faithful to our family. We are doing it for God. And even when we relax and take time to enjoy life, we are doing it for God. Amen. Mankind didn't create the Sabbath day. God did. Yeah. And when he did it, it was understood to be a day of rest. Amen. Praise and obedience. Mm -hmm. We give God praise. Mm -hmm. We obey God. Amen. But honoring God is praise and obedience. But it also means living in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And to live that way, we need to do everything that is good as if we are doing it for God. We should enjoy it. We should work hard and do our very best at it. Do everything that is good as, as if we are doing it for God. And, and when you do that, your blessings will come naturally. Because God wants his children to have a good, strong life. Right. Think about it, especially parents. Parents understand. When your children have a happy and prosperous life, that reflects on you. It says something about them. It does. Not everything. It does not say everything because sometimes the children make mistakes that they learn from the world. Mm -hmm. But when they are healthy and happy, that makes you smile. Mm -hmm. It brings you peace. So when we have a prosperous and happy life, that reflects on God. Mm -hmm. And right there is the key 
to honor and God. I'm finished for Live your life in such a way that it brings God glory and honor. Amen. Live your life in such a way that when people look at you, they know you're a Christian. Amen. Live your life in such a way that when people look at you, they know that God has blessed you. Amen. And when you do that, God will in turn bless you. Amen. And he'll protect you. Amen. And bless you in ways that we cannot understand. The scripture talks about what God will keep from happening. But you gotta understand that God is a God of restoration. Amen. Even if some bad things happen, He will restore you. Amen. If you get sick, He will heal you. Yeah. If you lose your money, He will bless you with an increase. If you fall down, even if you have to reach way down, He will pick you up. Yeah. And I'm a living witness that when you are in danger, he will say it. Yes. Amen. 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 Am